there were many prominent African leaders, Walter Sisulu, the Mbeki family, Governor the father, uh, to, to, to name just a few. Why was the apartheid government so afraid of Nelson Mandela? Was it the charismatic appearance of the man? He was convicted and sentenced to five years of imprisonment, made a speech, black man in a white man's court. But before that, they were really terrified of the man. They, they, they were because he was the leader of the African National Congress. The people within the country made it more and more difficult for them to govern, even with a state of emergency. They were concerned about the ascendancy of the, the South African protesters overseas. One of the serious concerns was in 1985, when the American banks refused to renew the short-term loans of South Africa. The currency hit rock bottom. They had to split rands for foreign and local consumption. This was the Chester Crocker intervention, wasn't it? Oh, yes, yes. No, not only that, <laughs> Oliver Tambo went to the United States to thank the youth of the universities for their contribution to this. He was told that one of the protesters was a young woman, a student, whose father was a multimillionaire, billionaire. Who was that? I won't mention the name. But Oliver, who was a very clever man, he was the president of the ANC, mm. called her into a private audience, thanked her for her participation in protesting on their university campus. But he said, thank you for all that. May I suggest that you speak to your father? <laughs> Uh, I think I've worked out who the lady was. But, yeah. She uh, did. Mm. And uh, it was he who said to his bankers <laughs> and his uh, borrowers in the industry, cut South Africa out. And that was the true turning point. It was the beginning of the end. And that's when they started. Mm making offers to Nelson Mandela, hoping to do a separate deal with him. And he told them no. Was there ever a real chance that Nelson Mandela might have been sentenced to death? Very, very... Because I'm going to couple that with another question to you. You uttered three words to him that he should say to save his life. First of all, that real you say did exist that reality. Well, what were the three words? The last paragraph of his great speech of 40 pages that hit yeah. the headlines of the world and was published by the Rand Daily Mail in, in uh, full, even though it may have been prosecuted. Originally it read, this is the country that I want the changes that I want to bring. It is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. That was the draft. I spoke to him and said, Nelson, you will be accused of seeking martyrdom. They will say that you are uh, you want a peaceful settlement, but here you say you want to die, which you know what the consequences would be. 
he said, look, you know, I've said this, that I'm prepared to die so often in my speeches that I'm not prepared to take it out. I said, Nelson, there may be a compromise. Surely you want to live and enjoy the ideals that you have fought for. Yes, I do want to live. Let's put in the words, if needs be, for when you say what the ideals are, for which, if needs be, I am prepared to die. Do you think that saved his life, those three I months? don't think so. It certainly helped. There were other things. Mm. We called Alan Payton the celebrated... Uh, mm. The writer. Writer. Mm. And you know what his evidence was, even though he was ridiculed by the prosecutor and called a communist, and, or a fellow traveler and other names. Alan Payton said, I know Nelson Mandela, Walter Sassoon, Govan and Becky, and a couple of the others in the mm. dock. They are the legitimate leaders of the majority of the people in South mm. Africa. One day we whites will have to negotiate a settlement with mm. them sentence them to death and execute mm. them, and when we want to negotiate, mm. we'll have no one to negotiate with. Were you ever called a communist or a Kafabuti? Oh, oh. Who, even worse names. By the security police. They were Did they fought. persecute you? If, uh, if uh, depriving me of citizenship and uh, and uh, 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 but how did you stay here if they deprived you of it? I had permanent residence. Ah, they couldn't yes. take that away from you. Well, they could if they wanted to. And I had information from the council of the of Prime Minister Foster. Mm -hmm. I defended Brown Fisher. And the security police were wind who went underground. They sh said, Brom Fisher, communist, who w went underground. One of his two lawyers was George Bezos. He's got underground, let's arrest uh, Bezos, which they had the r any right to, to do in terms of the legislation. Deal with him, meaning torture me in order to disclose uh, the whereabouts of Bromfish. Little did they know that I did not know <laughs> deliberately. Mm. I had a relationship with his younger daughter who the laborator arranged. <laughs> oh, uh, not that kind of an arrangement. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and, uh, when she saw him, she would see me afterwards. Okay. She was the conduit. She was the conduit. And uh, uh, John Foster, who was a member, of, uh, who was an advocate, and uh, we knew one another, stopped them and said, no, I know that George must be seen uh, him. Follow him and he will lead you to him. George, I can't miss this opportunity. What was John Foster like? Nobody ever asks this question. What kind of a man was he? You knew him. Uh, I knew him. He was, his heart and soul was for white supremacy. Mm. Uh, he had uh, been put into a uh, camp during the war because of his anti-war activities. Uh, but on a personal level, he had a sort of sense of uh, right, uh, right and, uh, and wrong. I sense you didn't really dislike him that much, even from, though he stood for everything that was opposite to what you stood for. Yes, but he was a fellow advocate. <laughs> Does that make the fellow devil? No, no, no. but you see, but you uh, see, you know, Compared to Fervurt. That sounds almost indefensible, of course, yes, George. Yes. yes. No, but if you compare him to Fervurt, mm. who was the apostle of apartheid, mm. uh, 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 
uh, Foster mm. had some sort of uh, semi-decency about him in relation to the judiciary. He, he was brutally honest. He was accused of appointing people to the bench who were blind fo uh, followers of the apartheid regime. Mm. And you know what he said? You are right. We do appoint those who are with us. But the trouble is that after they are judges for six months, they think that they are there on merit and they won't <laughs> listen to us. <laughs> you know, he, he had, yeah. he had a, a sense yeah. of, uh, of right and wrong. Let's just go quickly to uh, th that night before sentence on Nelson Mandela. What was his mood? All of them yeah. pre prepared themselves emotionally that uh, they would be sentenced to, to death. And you, when you visited him on, on, on Robin Island, what was, what was his demeanor like then? And I was the only lawyer that uh, had a, a right to see him, and I saw him at least once every three months, so. Did you smuggle any messages in? Smuggle is... Uh, George, look at me now. Did you smuggle any messages <laughs> is, in? Uh, is not such a nice word. All right, did you... But we did discuss. We you had, discussed things, yes. We knew that we were being yeah. bugged. Mm. But we would write letter, w words on a piece of paper and we would talk about the weather and mm. this and the, so if there were two alternatives, two words. And that was your secret code? That was a secret code. Which of the two, mm. you know, he would write something down. Because there was no television in those days and yeah. uh, no cameras. And, and uh, from 85 on, I became a courier between him on Robben Island, and Oliver Tambo in Lusaka in London, mm. but with the knowledge of the Minister of Justice. They wanted to know from me how far they could push Nelson Mandela. I, on behalf of Mandela and Oliver Tambo, was trying to push the Minister of Justice how far they were prepared to go. Just touching on Winnie Mandela now, because uh, I, I, I'm known Winnie for many years. I, I feel she suffered incredibly. Uh, they sent her off to Brunfort. They uh, broke into her house at two o'clock in the morning in her night clothes and threw her out into the cold. And they kept on doing things like this. Uh, it was a deliberate attrition, wasn't it? Yes. She was a thorn in the eye. She was unrepentant, as her lawyer, a little too adventurous. <laughs> but I did manage to keep her out of jail, but she did serve terms without trial. What caused the divorce between her and Nelson Mandela? What was the downfall and breakdown of their marriage, truly? I've never been able to answer that one. You know, when your get, friends get divorced, you don't want to talk about it. You want to remain friendly with both. I was there. Uh, Winnie, I think, made tactical mistakes. Uh, I spoke to her and said, you know, Winnie, have you noticed that when the Queen of England walks, her consort, Prince Philip, walks one step behind? <laughs> She's no fool. She laughed and she said, I'll try. But, but she could didn't. Were you saddened? I was saddened by it because 
when he is accused of having stilled the Stompy. Stompy. She wasn't even charged with it. Mm. She wasn't charged. Mm. And we know who killed Stompy. When she was mm. away, it was Richardson and there, mm. there is considerable doubt that there is considerable, uh, well, there are questions asked whether or not he was not a plant by the security police in order to, to do what he did with the so-called football team uh, in order to alienate her from the support that she had of the Soweto population. That sort of thing. I'm glad you brought that up because there are the dirty tricks departments on every side. Every government has a dirty tricks department. How much of the dirty tricks department do you think was employed during the apartheid era? Oh, a lot. Using black people, of course. Using black people, yes. Mm. Uh, 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 Were you not wary of who you spoke to as a result of that? I, I was wary. Uh, I had consultations with her and others in my chambers. But, uh, you know, if it was too sensitive, I would not have a consultation in my office, which I was sure it was back then. It was, in fact, back because somebody asked for uh, amnesty for bug in my office. <laughs> But, uh, and I did not oppose it. Uh, I mean, you know, it was history. And, but I would go to the next door office of my colleague if he was in court and I would consult there. So we actually knew, and I, I also knew when I was being followed, uh, mm. the people in MK taught me about parallel following. You know, if you think that you are being followed, you turn, and go to a parallel street and if you are which is not in the way if you're going home at 11 o'clock at night after a meeting or even bridge plane thing uh, they would follow you and you would see Volkswagen with dimmed lights behind mm -hmm. and Stupidly, I would turn and go to the parallel road because I knew that in order that you should not suspect, mm -hmm. the uh, a Ford will take over the the Volkswagen, uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, if you took another road, they would also mm -hmm. quickly change. And, and that sort of thing. And I played cat and mouse with them. <laughs> Did you enjoyed that, didn't you? In some that? ways, yes. Yes, I can yes. see there's a little boy yeah, inside no, you, you know, that said, I'm I would go to the left <laughs> and then go to the parallel <laughs> road, and that, that, that would confuse them. And, and actually, it would create more suspicion. He, at 11 o'clock, and he's not going home, and we lost him because he turned. <laughs> you know, it was.